all be seated, please. Can I take Thank you. Write out the poem Jonathan Bing. Your class principal is going to your school principal, sorry, is going to type it up and everyone will get a copy of it. Now there are some simple, simple rules. The idea is to have the poem now one full year. To put it to memory. It is called memory retention or cognitive thought. Cognitive thought is the ability to reason, to think things through. That is what separates us from animals. God did not give animals cognitive ability. He gave man cognitive ability. That way we have the ability to reason with God. That's why God said to Adam, come let us reason. He didn't reason with animals. He just created animals. But when he formed man, he blew the breath of life into man, and man became alive. He got cognitive thought. When he blew into man, he blew his own breath. In the Hebrew, it's called ruwa. Can you say that? Ruwa, R-U-W-A-H. And it simply means breath or spirit. You wanna write it down, R-U? W A H. That's the Hebrew. And it translates to means breath or spirit. So man was just an empty shell. What you see here is just flesh. That is merely your body. Who you really are is inside. You are Ruwa. You are the breath of God. You are his spirit. That's why he said, we are sons of God. He birthed us from himself. We have the same creative ability that our creator has. We have the same ability to speak. And our words will not return unto us empty or void. Did you know that our creator in the midst of darkness, he spoke and said, let there be. And then all of creation went like this because they knew the next word that came out of God's mouth, it was going to come into being. Does anyone know about light and electricity? You're all quiet. Put your hands up if you know about light and electricity. What's your name, sir? Clyde. Can you tell me, Clyde? What happens if you were to touch a live electrical wire? He said it will shock yourself. Can you give me a demonstration of what happens when you get shocked? Okay, I asked him to give me a demonstration and he's still giving me an explanation. Do you know what the difference between a demonstration is and an explanation? To show me, do you know, sir? Can you give me a demonstration of somebody being electrocuted? He said no. Is there anyone in this class that can give me a demonstration? Yes, sir. Can you stand up, sir? Can you come to the front of the class? Can you give me a demonstration of somebody being electrocuted in charge? <laughs> is a force that moves you. It is impossible for you to contact electricity and not be moved. And so if you think about what I'm saying now, I am taking you somewhere and I'm educating you, so please remember this. When you grab a hold of an electrical wire, it moves you. Matter of fact, if I contact electricity and she, she tries to knock me free, the moment she touches me, then she will be charged up. That's the power of electricity. You literally gotta try to knock the person off and don't hold on to him because
because it will transfer that power into you. Now, right in my hand right now, I have an electrical light bulb. You know the one that goes up, it's round, and it comes down. I am going to educate you right now. I'm going to dissect this light bulb. I am going to cut the top part of it, the dome shape. Just hold on to that. Thank you very much. I want you to focus what's on the inside of the light bulb. Because the outer part of the light bulb, oh, by the way, young man, you can throw that away. I don't need it anymore. The inside of the light bulb is what is the key ingredient of the light bulb. The outer part of it is just to protect what is on the inside. Now remember, I started out by saying that your flesh, what we see, is just the outer part to really protect what's on the inside. Now what is on the inside here, it has a stem. And on the top of the stem, it's either a V or a W shape. And between them, there is a spring, and it's called a coil spring. The coil spring is so fragile that if you touch it with your hand, it will just break. So that's why they have the dome around it. It's to protect what's on the inside. Now, as you said, electricity vibrates. That's why they put rubber around the wires so if a bird lands on the wire, he won't get shot. And then they get the electrical wires, they connect it to light bulbs. And once again, you see it protected. Now, you have the source, you have the product, which is the light bulb, but you still don't have any power. Why? Even though you have the electrical charge, it's connected to the lamp. The light bulb is there. But there's one more thing you need for it to be light. You need to turn it on. You need to flip the switch. I'm going somewhere with this. Listen very carefully. So when you flip the switch on the wall, it releases the power that is in the line. It begins to contact the light bulb. That coil spring begins to vibrate. It vibrates at such a velocity that light comes forth out of the bulb. Isn't that amazing? Yes, now watch sir. this. I'm going somewhere with this. God created you. And God put his power source inside of you. You have the Holy Spirit that vibrates just like electricity. I can prove it to you right now. Would you like me to prove it to yes, you? Sir. Watch this. Yes, I want you to take two or three fingers and I want you to put it right here. Okay, now watch this. I want you to say, when I say three, I want you to say, let there be, and I want you to hold the B for three seconds. Ready? One, two, three. Let there be. Stop. What did you feel on your face? Vibration. Vibration just like electricity. Vibration just like the Holy Spirit. I'm here to tell you that God put inside of you the same power, the same source of the natural source called electricity. So watch this. When God said, let there be light, the word light vibrated across the universe and ignited light. And light is here with us now and forever will be because God spoke the word. Now, what do I need you to learn from this? I need you to learn that your words have power. The anointing that is inside of you have power. Yes, sir. And you have to flip the switch. You have to speak it. You have to open your mouth and release the power that is inside of you. So when you feel weak, God says, let the weak say that I am strong because I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You remember, 
Your words have power. If our creator created all what we see with words and he gave you the same ability, use it for the good. Use it for the glory of the kingdom. Thank you. older ones, that's why I wanted to come to you all. I need you guys to help the younger ones learn the poem. This is the poem Jonathan Bing. I, you asked a question? Okay. Would you like me to do it one more time for you? Show you the acting because it's not only the memory retention of learning the poem, but it's good when you act it out as well. Okay? When Jonathan Bing was young, they say, he slipped to school and then he ran away. He sat in the meadow and twiddled his thumbs and never learned spelling, grammar, or sums. So now when you tell him add one to two, explain what you mean, he will answer you. Do you mean tomorrow or that's too bad? What sort of one do you want me to add? For there was one before the race was through, for he ran too fast for the rest to run. But if two had one when the race was through, I'll say your answer was one by two. Oh, Jonathan, being you, how did the trick of doing sums and arithmetic? Oh, give me a chance, just one more try, said Jonathan Bing with a tear in his eye. Very well, Jonathan. I want you to try once more. I want you to count up to 174. 174, said he. Well, that's a great age for a person to be. Okay, so there it is. There is the acting. Next year, I'm coming down again to run into Gibson's. You're not gonna be here? So sad. So sad, but nonetheless, when you guys finish? When you guys finish? You finish June and then that's it, you move on to another school. Well, nonetheless, practice it between now and then and have the young kids. That's all I can say. Wednesday. I have to go to lunch in the um, Maybe Wednesday I'll try, but I don't know. I can't make any promises. Do you guys do devotions?